close your eyes and watch your breath. Tell yourself you're going to stay with the breath all the way through the in-breath, all the way through the out. Any other thoughts come into the mind, just let them go. And if you find that you've wandered off after some thought, then just let go of that trail and be right back at the breath. You want to get some control over your own mind. This is one of the scariest things about being born as a human being, is that we've got this mind that has all kinds of potentials. Potentials for good and potentials for bad. And we have to learn how to sort them out and gain some control over the bad ones so they don't overwhelm the good ones. But you find that if you can't even tell your mind to stay with one thing for five minutes, you're in big trouble. Because that means you can go wandering off after greed, aversion, and delusion cause all kinds of trouble for yourself and the people around you. So you need something to bring your mind under your control. So you can have a sense of refuge with the mind. This is when we talk about taking refuge in the Buddha and the Dhamma and the Sangha. It's basically because we realize we need an outside example for what right and wrong thinking can be, skillful and unskillful thinking can be. And then we can compare our lives with the example of the Buddha, the example of the Sangha, the people who've gained awakening after the Buddha. And in line with the Dharma, the teaching that the Buddha left behind as to the way to find true happiness. Because as he pointed out, the real suffering in the world isn't so much what other people do to us, it's what the mind does to itself, what we do to ourselves through our own thoughts, words, and deeds. This is why when we take refuge, we also take the precepts. To, they're an outside example of what we know is unskillful behavior. We make a promise to ourselves we're not going to follow that kind of behavior. We're not going to kill, we're not going to lie, we're not going to steal, engage in illicit sex, we're not going to take intoxicants. You find yourself tempted to do that, then you realize, okay, something has come up in your mind that you can't trust. We need standards like this to train ourselves. And then as we go deeper into the mind, the ability to keep the mind with one thing, stay here with the breath, is an important ability. It develops mindfulness and develops alertness. It gives you a sense of what it's like for the mind to settle down and be its own friend, to be the kind of mind that you can depend on, that you can rely on, that has its own inner strength. And they can use its inner strength from the inside out to create a true sense of well-being. When you have that sense of well-being that comes from within, it doesn't require that you take anything from anyone else. And you have more to offer to other people. So working inside like this is not a selfish thing. You're trying to straighten out all the various powers that the mind has. See which powers are the ones that you want to check and which ones are you want to encourage. And give yourself the strength and the ability to follow through with that insight. So this is why we have to train the mind, and because the mind has so many different ways of lying to itself, we have to keep training it again and again until it finally gets more and more reliable and can understand itself more clearly, to see where that greed, aversion, and delusion are coming from, and learn how to put an end to those causes. That's when the mind is truly safe and really has a refuge inside. So when we say we take the Buddha and the Dhamma and the Sangha as a refuge, it means we take them as our examples of what good behavior is, what reliable behavior is. So we can make reliable persons or reliable minds out of our own minds or our own persons. And that way we can, we can go through the world safely and we'll be safe to other people as well.